Welcome to Life According to Scripture, where the Word of God is alive, anointed, and geared toward developing, improving, and strengthening your relationship with the Lord. Our teachings aim to spiritually nurture both new believers and strengthen those who are already mature in their faith. We're grateful to have you join us in the study of the Word of God today. We pray that it penetrates your heart deeply, bringing you even closer to the Lord. Greetings, radio audience, in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, this is Minister Caroline Gothia coming to you live from Oasis of Faith Christian Center in Esperia, California, in the United States. Today, we're going to be talking about the topic of the importance of prayer. The importance of prayer. Once you become a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, your prayer life becomes significant. One day, several years ago, I was murmuring and complaining about some of the things we're seeing going on in our country, and quite frankly, in the world, period. Things we never dreamed would take place in the civilized modern world. These things can be unsettling and depressing if we don't stick with what the Word of God has to say about these issues. We're going to dive into the three scriptures today that I believe will help you and, and be a blessing to your life. As I sat watching the depressing news several years ago, the Holy Spirit brought a scripture to my mind and began to talk to me about this scripture. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Second Chronicles 714, it's in the Old Testament or in the, the Old Covenant in the Bible. Um, this scripture, we hear it quoted a lot, but I want to start with verse 13 today. Usually people start with Second Chronicles 714, but we're going to back up to verse 13 for teaching purposes today. The Lord is speaking to King Solomon, and he says the following. And I'm going to paraphrase it kind of in my own words. He says, even if I did shut up heaven or, or, or didn't allow heaven to be, or if I allowed it to be shut so that there's no rain. He's saying, even if I did do this, or if I command or allow the locust to devour the land, or if I allow pestilences among my people. He's saying, even if I did do these things, or even if I did allow these things, he's saying, even if I allow thee to take place among my people, this is where verse, verse 14 comes in, and it's very significant. If my people, that's you and that's me, the ones who've made Jesus Savior and Lord, he said, even if I did allow these things to happen, if my people, which are called by my name, you can't be called by his name if you're not his follower, his disciple, his disciplined one. If my people that are called by my name, if you would humble yourself, that scripture says. In other words, stop walking arrogantly in pride. If my people would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. So now the healing of the land, ha we have something to do with this healing manifestation taking place. When I say we, I'm talking about we, the followers, the disciplined followers, the born again believer of, on the Lord Jesus Christ. As I complained and murmured, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about this verse. He said, I never promised to heal the land because the sinner stopped sinning. You see, I was murmuring and complaining about what I was seeing on the news, which as far as I was concerned was just sinful, ugly, and demonic. And I'm complaining about that. I'm murmuring about that. So he says, he says, he says as I complained, he said, I never promised 
in that scripture that we just read, 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14, he says, I, I never promised to heal the land because the sinner stopped sinning. I said, if my people, that's you and that's me, beloved. He said, if my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. He placed the responsibility for the land being healed or not healed in the lap of the believer, not the sinner, not the heathen. Then he took me to this scripture, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. This is the responsibility he placed on those that, that have salvation or claim salvation and Jesus as their Lord. It says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, that's requests, prayers, intercessions, that's prayers for other people, and giving of thanks be made for all mankind. Verse 2, for kings, or in our case, it's presidents. In some countries, it's prime ministers. And for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life or peaceable life. So he's saying even here that the fact that you may not be living a quiet and peaceable life has to do with Second Chronicles 714, which he's saying has nothing to do with the sinner, but has everything to do with the born again, spirit filled believer. Hallelujah. Verse three, this is good and acceptable, he says, in thy sight. Verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth, not just those that you like, not just those that you agree with, not just those po politicians that you approve of. No, 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 no. He's saying he wants all mankind to be saved. Hallelujah. And he's given us the commandment to pray for them so that we can live a quiet and peaceful life. That's what scripture says. So instead of murmuring and complaining, scripture teaches us to pray for those in authority that we may live a quiet and peaceful life. Then Holy Spirit took me to a third scripture. We have first, we have second Chronicles seven, 14, this is our second one here. And now the third one is Philippians 4.8. It reads, remember, he's teaching what to do in these troubling times in place of murmuring. Remember I said at the very beginning, that's what I was doing, complaining and murmuring. Now he's telling us what to do. See, he'll always give us a way out. He's, we, there's always a solution to every issue. So Philippians 4, 8. Now, he's teaching what us to do in, in troubling times. Here we go. Um, in troubling times, in place of murmuring and complaining, he's giving us good, solid instruction on how to live in the times that we're living in. Now, I don't know about you, but I need good, solid instructions to live according to what's going on in this world and to stay above it. Hallelujah. So Philippians 4, 8 reads, finally, in other words, I've been saying some, this to you all along. So that's what, when, when he says finally, this is not the first time he's addressed this. That's what that means. Finally, brethren, whatsoever, he's telling you how to think, what to think, how to change your thinking. He tells us in another passage, Romans 12, 1 through 3, we've got to change our thinking. Be transformed in our minds, in our thinking, and line up with the word of God. This goes right along with it. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are honest, telling you what to think on, this way you won't be depressed, this way you won't be hostile, this way you won't be angry when you watch the news, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. 
not on the things that are happening all around us in our culture. He's giving us the solution. Think on these things. First and second Chronicles 714, we have the solution that we're to pray, turn from our wicked ways and so forth in that passage. Now he's telling us to change our thinking. He's saying, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. You don't see many good reports on the news. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, these are the things that you direct your thinking to and you will not be depressed and down and out and in an ugly mood for, for the things that, that are going on in the world. He was teaching me, and I'm sharing it with you. He was teaching me, think on these things instead of murmuring and complaining on the negative and the evil that we see going on every day in today's world. <coughs> Hallelujah. He's telling us if we're going to change anything, it's going to start with prayer and it's going to start with our minds changing our thinking and with the word of God, renewing our mind. You cannot renew your mind minus the word of God. Hallelujah. He was teaching me that if my people that are called by my name, that's you and me, if we would do our part, if we would pray, if we would turn from our wicked ways, stop hiding and intending we're righteous, get rid of them, seek his face. This is what he's saying. If we would pray for those in authority, whether we like them or not, if we would think on and talk about whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is positive, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honest, whatsoever is pure, Whatsoever things are lovely and of good report, not bad report, not gossip, not lies. We, that we, I mean, it might be wise to just turn the news off. If it, you know, sometimes I just, I'll just, I'll just turn it off because it's hard to go align yourself up with what the word of God is saying here and continue to let those words, those negative words uh, go into your ear gates. I'm sorry, but it has an effect. And when you study the word of God and you find out the power of words, the power of the spoken word, then you'll understand exactly what I'm saying, not allowing this stuff to go into your ear gates uh, un uncontested with the word of God. He told me, you think on these things. These are the things, things of virtue, things that are of praise, things are of good report. Uh, this is where we place our attention, not on the negative news reports, not on people breaking the law and there's no consequences and all the things that we're seeing that's happening in the world today. He says, if my people doesn't make any difference what's going on, I'm not saying that we shouldn't care about what's going on in the world today, but we don't judge our life by it. We don't become consumed with it. We don't meditate on it day and night. This is not our topic of conversation 24 seven as believers. Our topic of conversation should be the word of God, the hope that comes in the word of God, the faith in the, in the promises of God. Hallelujah. Scriptures like we're talking about here today, replace those negative things with some of these scriptures. Hallelujah. If my people that are called by my name and then he tells you what he'll do. Hallelujah. He'll heal the land if we do our part. Hallelujah. Then he tells you what to think on, what to think about, what to meditate on. And if you think on it, then that's what you're going to talk about. You don't think on one thing and then talk about something else. This is why it's so important when he says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report, virtuous things. These are the things that you put your mind to, that you focus on. Hallelujah. And then you will walk in the peace that passes understanding. He says, if my people, that's you and me, if we are that are called by his name, if we will do these things, he's saying to us, he will heal the land. Hallelujah. Now that's all the time we have for today, beloved. 
You can reach us in the United States at Oasis of Faith Christian Center, 17520 Lemon Street, Hesperia, California, 92345. In the United States, you can also reach us at lifescripture at gmail.com. Now, until we come into your home again next week, I pray the blessing of God over your life and over your family. I thank you that you will take this word deep into your spirit and into your heart, that you will study it and meditate on it. And may God give thee increase.